Welcome to It's a Woman's World, where we'll meet achieving women making a difference in our community. I'm Carolyn Bruna. Our guest is Anita Segretti, an insurance professional for 29 years and an active volunteer in Montgomery County. She's currently on the board of the Catholic Business Network and the president of Transformations of Montgomery County. Welcome, Anita. Thank you. It's good to be here. Thank you. Well, actually, um, you, we've been friends for many years, and you were on my show in 2005. I had to look it up. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. So it's yeah. right, and yeah. so it's really welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, it's lovely to, to have you and to see you again. Yeah. Well, it's good to be here, Carolyn. Good. We've got a lot to talk about. We do. And actually, today's topic, we're going to talk about um, networking opportunities for women uh, in the Montgomery County area. And But we've selected about 10 organizations uh, for networking and or giving back to the community, that places that you're familiar with, and I'm familiar with some of them as well. Yeah, yes. Good. So, but before we start on that, I just want to ask you a, a bit about yourself and 29 years as an insurance professional. And I know, I want to know, you know, how you've stayed in it so long and, and what you love about it. What yeah. I love about it is it's different every day. No two clients are the mm. same. The industry is constantly changing. Uh, when new things come up 10 years ago, no one knew anything about cyber liability. And now mm. everyone understands it and realizes how much they need it. So the insurance industry is always evolving where there are court cases and people have had judgments against them and they come up with insurance policies to meet that need. Hmm. So uh, it's, it's, as I said, it's always changing. I get bored easily, so I would not make it in a business that was kind of uh, the same every day. Oh, I see. Well, you know, you mentioned cyber liability, which I hadn't realized that was part of your insurance. And did you start uh, being interested in that years ago? Because now it's a big thing, but it hadn't been originally. No, it hadn't been, and I didn't know that much about, I mean, I'm not an IT person. Mm. I'm, I'm lucky I can turn my computer on somewhere. <laughs> no, it's not quite that bad. Yeah. Um, but when, when you realize the depth of information that we all have mm -hmm. in the course of business dealing with our clients, and you realize if someone gets into your computer and takes that information, that you've really violated the privacy of your client. And, of course, there are federal laws and state mm -hmm. laws that govern mm -hmm. that. So it, that's the reason that cyber liability is an important coverage that many, many businesses need. Oh, goodness. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's interesting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Hmm. Especially in the insurance business, I'm sure. Oh, yes. Private especially. information. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're going to talk about opportunities for networking. So um, I want to ask you, I know you have specific ideas about the power of networking. Yes. So why don't you tell us some? Well, networking is very powerful, but you have to put a lot of effort into it. You can't just... Go to something, mm. sit on the side, have your little glass of wine, talk to two people and go home and say, wow, that, I really didn't get anything out of this. And I think the mistake most people uh -huh. make is the first thing they say when they're new to networking, you can always tell, hi, I'm Anita Segretti, what do you do? Yes. And that's all they want to know. You know, is this a person I can connect with? Would this person be, can I sell them a copy machine? Can I sell them an insurance policy? Are they good connection for me? So you lose me right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, you know, well, oh, that's interesting. What do you do when you're not working? Where'd you go on your last vacation? Do you have mm -hmm. children in school? Something about a person and getting to know the person. Yeah. And once you know the person, if you like them and you trust them, then that's a good reference for you, for your clients and for the people that you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm more of a matchmaker than a networker <laughs> because everyone's not, I mean, everyone's a possible client. But everyone, I don't look at people as, can you be a client for me? Mm -hmm. Can I get business from you? But who do I know that I can connect you with, that you can help them or they can help you? That's a wonderful takeaway for people uh, for networking. And in the business world, because I know what you just said, I, I always hear that you want to do business with people you like and trust. And, Absolutely. But people, I know when... Um, they're talking about it in an organization. They'll say, well, can you get business through them? But that you're right. That cannot be your first no. idea or reason to go there. Yeah, yeah, that's so, true. And so when you become useful to someone else, they'll, they'll remember that. And someone will say, oh, gee, I don't like my insurance agent or this. And they'll say, oh, call Anita. And the <laughs> phone just rings. Uh, you know, and so it, it, it works. It's a, it's a big circle, and it mm -hmm. takes time sometimes. And sometimes it never happens with that contact. But mm. that shouldn't be the object. The object should be getting to know the people in your community, getting to know what they do, and seeing how you can help them or connect them with someone else. Mm -hmm. And it works. 
It does uh, for you, yeah. and I'm sure it would work for many more people if they really espouse that particular theory. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, you've also I've also heard you say um, oh, there's no such thing as competition. Oh yeah. So tell me about that. I tell my clients that all the time, and I tell my friends that there are many other people that sell insurance. That's mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, but we're not competitors because we all do it in a little different way. Hmm. I met a nationwide insurance agent at a chamber lunch about 20 years ago, and that I'm still getting referrals from him. And I send him clients when he's a better fit than I am for the products that he has. And he'll call up and say, Anita, I can't do anything for this client. Can you help them? That's great. And um, so huh. it, it always works that way because somebody might want big accounts. Someone might specialize in a specific area of insurance or whatever it is you're doing, art or printing or whatever. You know, you'd be a printer and you love to do wedding invitations and someone else likes to do backdrops for stage. Oh, so you can feed each other mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. and not lose business. Yeah, that's so true. And I don't think enough people think that way. Well, hopefully more and more people do. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, some people do, I'm sure. Well, we call it a business community. We have to work to make it a community. Mm, that's true. And that, yeah. that's, that's yeah. the solution, I think. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Just like you said, networking is work, and we do have to put work into it. We want to enjoy it, of course, Yeah. Uh, and our glass of wine, but... We also have to put some work into it. Well, yeah, it. and I mean, I'll gravitate. If I see you in the room and, and 20 strangers, I'm going right over and saying, hi, Caroline the first, and I'm going to talk to you. Right. But that doesn't mean I'm only going to talk to you, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm going to broaden the circle. And when I, and I know people, if I'm in a networking group that I'm familiar with, and I see someone who's new just standing on the side, uh -huh. I'll always pull them in, because that's, that's a hard place to be. We've all mm -hmm. been there. Yes, you know, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, you're back at the sixth grade dance, standing on the <laughs> sideline, <laughs> waiting for someone to ask you to dance, uh -huh. and we, that's no fun. Right. Yeah. Well, let's, and we we're mentioning networking, and um, we're going to talk about the different organizations and groups. And I was uh, kind of got them into three categories. Um, and we'll explain. I'd like you to explain their difference in networking, or, networking organizations, chambers, and groups that give back, which you're calling nonprofits. Nonprofits. Okay. Yeah. All right. Tell so first of all, there's straight networking groups, which you usually have to pay to join, BNI, uh -huh. uh, and things like that, and Everyone in there is dedicated to getting leads for everyone else in the group, whether the group is 10 or 20 or 30. You know, if someone, if there's a real estate person in the group and you know someone needs a real estate agent, you're going to make a beeline for them and say, this is the person to do it. So they're really leads-oriented groups, and it's a wonderful way to start mm -hmm. networking because it really makes you focus on that and realize how important it is to give other people leads. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are chambers of commerce, and the chamber of commerce uh, is promoting your business, but more importantly, they're promoting the community and connecting people in the community and all mm -hmm. the members of the chamber. They want the members of the chamber to know each other and give them the opportunity to do business together. And the third thing mm -hmm. that a chamber does is that it advocates for the businesses in the state house, at, at, well, not the federal level particularly, although that's probably happened, but certainly at the county and the state level. And if you're like me and you're busy running your business, you don't have a clue about the politics and how mm. to do this effectively. So that is where a chamber becomes very valuable for a business mm. as an advocate. It could be the simple thing that they want to close a parking garage and you've got a restaurant two blocks away. And if they close the parking garage, you'll, you'll lose oh, sure. all your clients because they have no place to park. And in Bethesda, we understand that pretty darn well. So when the chamber realizes these problems, which are brought to them by the businesses, they advocate for them. And sometimes they're able to convince the county or the state not to do this or that. Mm -hmm, yeah. uh, and that's really very, very important for all of us. Hmm. That's very interesting because I hadn't realized that chambers did that as well, as mm -hmm. much. Yeah. I, I knew somewhat, but uh, they really are interested in, in giving back profits, not just for themselves, but for the community. I hadn't yeah. realized that. That's right. That and then there are the nonprofits, extent. you know, the the Manas and Wider mm -hmm. Circle and places like that. And they're always networking. Volunteer opportunities can become networking opportunities. Because mm. when you do them, you meet people from other businesses. And my theory is if I see, if you are there volunteering at Manor with me for a couple times of the year or something, mm -hmm. and someone else does exactly what you do, but I already know that you're giving back to the community, you're at the top of my list. You're the person oh. that's going to matter to me because that's near to my heart and that's part of, part of what I do. Oh. Whoops, my little tape came little off. <laughs> uh, um, so, you know, I, th I think that's the value of being serving at the nonprofit level 
And doing that, you I get to see. meet other people mm -hmm. that do the same thing you do mm -hmm. and have that sense of giving back to the community, which for me is very important. Mm -hmm. I think it enriches our lives as well. It enriches the life of the person who is doing that volunteer work as well or giving back to the community as well as Absolutely. networking for business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you had actually mentioned that on the phone to me. Yeah, yeah. right, right. So I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about uh, the Catholic Business Network, because you're on the board there. Yes, I, was, and I served as president last year, and I'm still on the board. Um, we are a networking group for people of all faiths who bring their morals and ethics, and their good ethics, into the workplace. So that's what we do. Uh, our mission is to raise money for Catholic schools. Many of us uh, are a product of Catholic education. We value that education. We feel it's given us a and a, a tremendous advantage in the workforce and in, in the world, and we want to see it continue for our children and all the children that follow, hmm. because my children have long been educated. Uh, we've, this is our 25th year, and uh, to date we have raised $1,060,000 for Catholic schools, elementary schools and high schools. So that's terrific, because we're a small organization with only about 100 members. So, uh, is this you're talking about raising that much money for the Catholic schools in our area, uh, Montgomery County, Maryland? All of Montgomery County, Maryland. Mm. The scholarships to the high schools are to high schools that serve children in Montgomery County. So it could be a high school that's actually located in the District of Columbia. But the elementary schools are all in Montgomery County. Mm. We give them grants. We have an essay uh, scholarship competition in the spring for eighth graders going into high school, and then we send the checks to the high school. So it's not a lot of money. Tuition is, you know, like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars for a Catholic high school. So the tuition, the scholarships are twenty five hundred dollars or fifteen hundred dollars. But it really helps, oh, yeah. and for some kids, it might make the difference mm -hmm. of being able to go or not go. And then the the okay. ones for the elementary schools are all need based. We never know who gets them. The principals just tell us that there is a need with a particular family, and we give a grant, and that child can stay in the Catholic school. Oh, I see. So, and so um, you don't know the recipients of the scholarships in any of them? No. Oh, we get letters from the principal telling us, uh -huh. but we don't yeah. know the names, no. Yeah. Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think we're going to take a break, and then we'll come back, because we're going to start talking about chambers. And we have a few, quite a few of those, so we'll keep all right. them all together in the second half. Okay. 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 <laughs> we'll break for a short public service announcement. Maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made home ownership happen. Homeschooling yourself on loans, beefing up your credit score. So I'm pre-approved. You were like, yes! Sorry. Color coding listings, ticking boxes, and flushing every toilet in a 20-mile radius. Home sweet home. You aced house hunting. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Welcome back to It's a Woman's World. We're talking with Anita Segretti about different organizations and chambers to give back to the community. Uh, Anita, we were just mentioning uh, different organizations, as I said, um, and I'd like you to remind people again what the chamber's uh, purpose is, and so we'll talk about those. Um, the chambers try to uh, unite people within a business community like the Bethesda Chamber it has that area. Get the, getting to know each other within the chamber and do business with each other and promoting each other's businesses. Oh. And getting to know the community. They give you the opportunity to know all the businesses in the community and the nonprofits. Mm -hmm. So in general, it's the businesses and the community as well for chambers, right. kind of a, a blanket for most or yes. almost all chambers. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Oh, okay, yes, indeed. great. So um, we have four or five chambers here in our area uh, well, actually, we have many more than four or five chambers, but uh, we've selected about four or five chambers yeah. for us to discuss because we know those best. In, right. Yeah. So uh, let's start with the Rockville Chamber. Well, the Rockville Chamber is a relatively new chamber. It has a lot, uh, has a few large businesses, but a lot of medium size and small businesses. So I like that. Oh. People that I get to know are running their own businesses, have the same thoughts and concerns that I do, and they're people that we can work with on a one-to-one -one basis. It's not like a big company and you have to try to figure out how to get to the top and get to somebody. Hmm. Um, they have a lot of good, they have breakfast meetings, they have lunch meetings, 
Um, they have networking volunteer networking opportunities throughout the year at MANA and Interfaith and places like that. So I really enjoy being on the Rockville Chamber, being a part of it. I was on their board for, I think, three years, mm. chaired a few things for them. So it's a very nice chamber, very welcoming, warm people. So I like the Rockville Chamber. Mm. And my office is in Rockville. I live in the Bethesda Chevy Chase area, so I'm a member also of the Greater Bethesda Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. and have been for over 20 years. Hmm. Well, I was going to ask about that second, so we might as well flip into that one, yeah. the Bethesda Chamber, yeah, and its, it's particular differentiation. Well, it's different because it has a lot of large, large corporations as members. Um, NIH is there right down the street. That's one of their members. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's huge. Um, mm -hmm. They are one of the older chambers. I think they were chartered in 1926, if I'm correct. Um, about six years ago, they won the award for the best chamber in the United States, which is amazing. But that's the Chevy Chase? Yes. The best chamber in the U.S. That's yeah. Sounds one. fabulous. Isn't yeah. that amazing? Right. It's so it's a very well-run chamber. Uh, it's got a lot of connections. Anyone that's a member, you can pick up the phone and say, Hi, I'm calling because I'm a chamber member, and the other chamber member will take your phone call. You know, of course, if you, you know, they may not buy your product or do business mm. with you if they can't, but at least they'll take your phone call. Mm. And that's the value of the chamber because you're part of that community and part of the membership and it gives you some uh, rights and, uh, mm. you know, just, just mm -hmm. open the door sometimes and that's all you need sometimes. Yes. So are most businesses... Uh, join chambers that are in their specific area because we're Bethesda and Rockville are, of course, close to each other. And, and um. Well, that's why I belong to both of them. Mm -hmm. I think it's very beneficial. I think it's important to belong to the chamber where you work mm -hmm. so that you can make the connections ah. and in the city that you work in. I, um, I mean, I do business in the District of Columbia and in Virginia. I'm licensed in many states. Um, and for a long time, I was at the Board of Trade just for that reason, so I could make connections in the District of Columbia. Um, but it's also important to join the chamber where you live so that you can find out about, you know, when the rescue squad's having open house or when they're having a parade in Bethesda and things for your family and community things that you can be a part of, especially if you're my age and your children are grown. It's hard to be a vital part of a community unless you belong to an organization mm -hmm. that tells you about these opportunities. Mm -hmm. So oh. that that's one of the things that I really like. I really feel connected to my Bethesda mm -hmm. Chevy Chase community I because see. of the chamber. And also I can see a um, benefit for new businesses because they may new to the area perhaps. Yeah. And then they can also benefit from learning these things about the, the Absolutely. Uh, offerings of the specific chamber, yeah. Mm -hmm. We were talking about Bethesda Chamber, and I know for a while there I was going to the meetings for um, a senior networking. Oh, yeah. yeah, tell us about that. They were the first chamber in the United States to have a senior market committee, and that goes way back, almost 15 years now, I believe we've had that. Um, and it is, it's designed for members of the chamber who market to seniors. And when you think about it, that's just about everybody. I mean, seniors mm -hmm. go to restaurants, they go on trips, they, you mm -hmm. know, they buy shoes, they buy cars, they buy everything, right? Um, they have a little more disposable income than young people because they mm -hmm. don't have as many responsibilities. So it's really great to understand the senior community. Um, we have a lot of a lot of members of that community are caregivers and assisted living facilities and mm -hmm. things like that. So it really gives you the opportunity again, to know more about what's in your community and what's available for seniors and how you can be a part of that. And it's really great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember when I went to those meetings, um, they had speakers uh, mm -hmm. telling us how that we could, we could um, uh, work with or appeal to the seniors' market. Yes. Uh, yeah, and I thought that was very good and mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. yeah, it is very good. And, yeah. uh, I think a lot of people forget that, um, unless, of course, you're selling, you know, products that are designed for seniors, you right, know, right. hearing aids and stuff like that. We're not talking about that. Just right. generally what, you know, appeals to seniors and how it's a little different to market to them and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. learning from each other. And that's really cool. And I hate to say the baby boomers were getting older now. And so we're kind of fitting into some of that marketing. And, and as you said, you know, there is more disposable money and people are traveling more and, and wanting more things these days, I think, well, yeah. or that particular uh, group. And as the population grows older, it's important for us to understand how it is, how differently you market to 
and treat mm -hmm. seniors. Mm -hmm. There's a, an, um, a movement out called Dementia Friendly Training where people come into businesses and train them, even restaurants and places like that. You know, you might take your grandmother out to dinner and she has oh. a little bit of dementia and she gets upset because something isn't exactly right or whatever, and they teach you how to just talk to them and change the subject a little bit, and you end up with a happier client, mm -hmm. a family that's, oh, my gosh, everything went well with dinner, and a business that they know they can go back to because they really feel welcome. So there are all kinds of dimensions from the senior mm -hmm. marketing mm -hmm. committee that filter out to different kinds of businesses in the community. So it's a wonderful oh, resource. That is amazing. Yes, I hadn't yeah. heard of that. That's great. Yeah. And different cities and different businesses are getting little stickers that say dementia friendly and they put them, they mm -hmm. advertise them that way mm -hmm. because we all have relatives that this is a, yeah. a, a problem for and a problem that can easily be solved. Yeah. Oh, by a caring community. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of nice. So I said there are many, many mm, benefits to this. Yeah. And I can see even the person in the business feeling more comfortable and relaxed when they see that happen. They don't get so upset and think they're, they don't like my service or, or my product or right. you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah. And when you huh. think of it, I mean, that's the dentist office. It's the clothing store. It's the giant. Oh. It's the pizza place on the corner. It's the dry cleaners. It's everything. It's every huh. single business. So, yeah. Because we have an aging population. We do. We so do. Yeah. those things are important. Mm -hmm. And knowledge is powerful. So the more mm. you learn about something, the better equipped you are to handle it, yeah. whatever it is. It's true. Yeah. It's so true. Yeah. So it's okay. And then um, I was thinking about uh, a few other chambers that we don't know quite as well, but I know are here in the area. There's the Greater Silver Spring Chamber, the Wheaton Kensington Chamber, and the Hispanic Chamber of Montgomery County. Um, have you been to any of their meetings? I've been or to which a few meetings you? here and there, but um, it's just it's usually just geographic reasons that I stay where I am. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if somebody has a networking thing in Silver Spring at six o'clock, the traffic's just horrible, and right, I don't right. want to go. Like I won't cross the bridge at a certain time of the day, you know, yes, that type of thing. That's okay. So I kind of limit myself to uh, several that are more in mm -hmm. my, my geographic area. So getting around to them is a little easier. Yeah. But they're both, all three of them are really powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, chambers. Mm -hmm. um, the Hispanic Chamber is just doing wonderful things with the Latino community. And yes. I'm and very glad to see that. Oh, yes. And I've been to, uh, actually, not their meeting as much as I've been to their gala mm -hmm. a few times. And uh, they have a wonderful way of us honoring the people who have contributed, the businesses who have contributed to their community. They're very, very active. And um, they really do uh, think about that and really um, carefully carefully uh, give to them and help them out. Yeah, yeah so it's nice. It's wonderful to mm -hmm. see because it's been an unserved community mm -hmm. in that regard for mm -hmm. a long time. So I'm, I'm delighted that really? they're doing it and uh, doing it yes, so well. Yeah. And the others, the, Silver, the Greater Silver Spring, I, I've just bunch of ones, but as you said, it was out of my area. So I guess that's a tip for people. A takeaway is you probably uh, will need to check the chambers in your locale, in your that's area. Another reason to you yes. know, join the chamber <clears throat> where you live so that the commute, you know, you don't think to yourself, oh, I don't want to go to that breakfast because I have to drive an hour and a half to get there. Right, Forget it. Right. It's 15 minutes down the road. I'm going to the breakfast, you know. Yeah. Um, and when you think of how many events there are in a month, that makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. The convenience factor because, you know, for all of us, I that's know. that all is a factor. Oh, it is. Yeah. And even and then the Wheaton Kensington, I know I've been to a, a number of those. And. Uh, the people I've met are just sincere business people who want to profit not only for themselves, but they want the community to oh. do well as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I think um, most chambers have that. Most chambers have that. Everyone has good people. I mean, 99%, maybe 98%. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll give you that. 98% of the people on this earth are really good people. <laughs> you know, I mean, I see it with my clients every day. I mean, I have wonderful clients, mm -hmm. and they all ethnic backgrounds, all ranges of business from little to very large, and they're just wonderful people to work with. That's so, nice. uh, yeah. you know. Sure. It's individuals, and don't they say that once you get to know the individual, yeah. you know, the background kind of fades away. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. Let's talk about um, a couple of the other businesses, the networking organizations here in groups. Um, the one that I'm looking for, oh, is your Transformations that you're now the president oh, of. I'm yeah. now the president of Transformations, founded by Bethany Porter, who is a member of the Women's Business Organization. Right. Um, and uh, she's an interior decorator, and she said one day at one of the meetings, you know, 
I've been doing this for people that can afford to pay for it, but my goal in life is to do this for those that absolutely can't pay for it. Mm -hmm. So that's how transformation started. We now work with the National Center for Children and Families, mm -hmm. um, and we work with their Future Bound program, which is for adolescents age 18 to 24, aging out of foster care. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful program. They provide apartments for them. They pay their rent. They have a social worker on site at the apartment complex. This mm -hmm. one's right behind Congressional Plaza. And so there's someone there 24 hours a day. They monitor the, the uh, clients. Mm -hmm. um, they have to be working full-time or in school full-time or a little bit of each. Mm -hmm. um, so they have to be getting on with their lives. They teach them how to you know, cook and do the wash and things mm -hmm. like that. So what we do mm -hmm. is we go in, we interview them, we find out what they like, what they don't like, what color they like. Do they like purple? Do they like orange? Do mm -hmm. they like motorcycles? Do they like classical music? And then we decorate their apartment to suit them and mm -hmm. for every single one of these people it's the very first time in their life that someone's done something mm -hmm. for them yeah. tailored to them because they've been living out of yeah. foster homes and things so all their lives so it's, it's amazing. Different idea that to come up with that I think that was wonderful Bethany yeah, yeah. let's we're, move on a little bit because I can't believe we're running out of time okay. but a wider circle I know that's a very important uh, place. A oh, wider to, circle is just an amazing in, place. In Montgomery They're County. Trying to eradicate pro poverty not just put a band-aid on it. Mm -hmm. uh, they start by giving furniture that is donated to them to the poor so that people don't have to sleep on the floor, which many people, you wouldn't believe huh. in Montgomery County how many children go to sleep at night and don't have a bed to sleep in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, can, they have a job awareness program now. They help people with professional clothing. And they, they just do wonderful, wonderful things for the residents of Montgomery County. Great, mm. one, yeah. one of the best yeah. nonprofits ever. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. And let's talk about the conference called the Power Conference. Oh, the Power Conference, That yeah. uh, when I was president of Women Business Owners of Montgomery County in 2010, uh, that we formed that Power Conference. And mm -hmm. so uh, it's for uh, business women from what smaller uh, businesses to larger or to larger businesses mm -hmm. and um, networking and, and uh, giving back to well, I guess that's not being just networking and a day of fun. That's day what it fun. is, really. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And ending up with a wonderful ice cream social. <laughs> the ice cream so, part's pretty good. Right, right, right. I like right, that. Right. So tell us so your we get, idea. We get about eight or nine hundred people at the Power Conference. I've attended it every year since the first year. Um, and <clears throat> as you said, it's part of women business owners of Montgomery County mm -hmm. and Prince George's County. Um, and it's really, it really is an opportunity for women to get together and to learn from each other. Um, you know, this mm -hmm. year they're going to do the sessions a little differently, but every year they put a little different bent on it. Um, so it's really a great opportunity for women, those mm -hmm. starting out or those established. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, in August of every year. Mm -hmm. well, yes, yeah. uh, that's great. And before we, uh, well, why don't you tell us um, how people can get in touch with you for either to know about insurance or your fabulous uh uh, degrees of uh, different networking throughout the counties. Give yeah. tips. Of All right, so you, you, my my office phone number is going to be posted, I suppose. Yes. 301-468-9600. Um, you can certainly email me, anita at asicready.com. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be happy to help anyone that I can get connected You're with these organizations at... because I, I know them well, and um, mm -hmm. they're very worthwhile. Um, and you can just... You can just build a whole social circle around them, too, because mm -hmm. you and I have been friends. How many friends I met from WBO, exactly. women business right. owners, right. Yeah. Uh, that have yeah. been my friends for 20 years. And uh, some of them are my clients. But it's just wonderful to make yeah. friends. And the older you get, the more important I think that is. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you. It's been wonderful oh, having Carolyn. you on the show again. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you for having me. You're I welcome. appreciate it. If you know a woman who's gone above and beyond to contribute to our community, please email us. We're It's a Woman's World at mmctv.org. Remember, it's a woman's world. I'm Carolyn Bruna. See you next time.